All right, um, this is Ms. Whitaker, and this is the first half of the semester exam review for seventh grade math. Um, I'm going to go through this really quickly. We've gone through it in class, um, but I just want to go through the answers quickly so you have that available at home in case you miss something in class. Um, if you have any questions on any of these things that go beyond what you see here on the paper, then please feel free to email me or ask me on Monday. We're going to go over the second half of the review on Monday. The second half of this review will be on video on Monday after school. So stay tuned for that. And uh, remember that your exam is not going to be, not going to look exactly like this review. This review is meant as tools to make sure you know everything we've talked about over this last semester. And the exam will be uh, reflective of taking those concepts and applying it to real life scenarios. So you're going to need common sense, you're going to need to bring your brain, and everything that we've learned. Um, there, it's not going to be too hard, but you will need to bring your brain with you. So let's just treat this as a tool to help us prepare and make sure that we understand all the basics of everything that we've learned over this last semester. All right, I'm going to go really quick, but remember you can always rewind if you need to or freeze if you need to take a look at what I have written here. All right, on number one, you'll notice this little smiley face. It's a little strategy that I use when I know that I have the right answer. So I just wanted to show that and point that out. Um, so when I have a smiley face, I only put that there when I'm 100% sure of my answer. And number one, I'm supposed to identify a pattern and use it to write the next three numbers. From 172 to 159, then to 146, I know I'm going down by 13 every time. Now I checked it with 14, 12, and 26, and it just doesn't work for these others. So I know it's A, and that way I can put a smiley face if I'm 100% sure. Number two, exponents does not mean 4 times 2, it means 4 2 times. 4 times 4 is 16. Please do not mess up on exponents. Um, another example would be 3 to the third power is the same as 3 times 3 times 3. Um, it's not going to be 9, it's going to be 9 times 3 which is 27. So 3 to the third is 27, not 3 times 3 is 9. So please make sure you understand what exponents are. All right, number three, 182 times 10 squared. 10 squared is 10 times 10, which is 100. 100 times 182 is 18,200. Number four, this is uh, PEMDAS, order of operations. This is then worked out, but I also just wrote down, as I was looking at the problem before I worked it out, the order of the operations I'm going to do. I'm going to do this multiply first, then I'm going to divide, then I'm going to add, then I'm going to subtract, and that's in PEMDAS order. So it may be a handy little tool for you to do um, before you even start on working it out. And then with your, when you're doing PEMDAS questions, just do them twice and make sure you get the same answer. If you get different answers, then you know you're going to have to do it again um, because you're doing something. One of them are wrong. Maybe two of them or both of them are wrong, so you need to be real careful with those. Just go in PEMDAS order. Remember, multiply and divide is same power, so it's left to right, and add and subtract is also left to right. All right, number five, the answer is D. Um, a lot of people made the mistake of flipping that little exponent of two up there inside to that five and doing 13 minus five times five, which is 25, and getting the negative 12. Don't do that. That squared is the last thing we're going to do because it's outside the parentheses. You've got to do everything in the parentheses before you even square it. So make sure you go in order every time. Parentheses and inside the little parentheses, you've also got to go in PEMDAS order. So we're going to multiply before we add. All right, number six, I'm going to multiply here. Then I'm going to add. That's in parentheses. And then I'm going to multiply to get 250. Number seven, um, I'm in this online media store. I'm downloading some songs and books. The songs are $3 a piece and I'm buying 15. So that's $45 right there just for the songs. Then I've got um, some books. I got three and they're $9 a piece. So that's 27 just for the books. And then I'm adding seven for a total of 79. Hope you're not paying 223. I hope you're a little bit more careful than that. Um, so, so stand back every once in a while and use your common sense to answer. Alrighty, um, number eight. We're supposed to write a phrase as an algebraic expression. Algebra just means there's some letters involved, some variables. 
All right, so 4 times the sum of a number in 20. Times and sum are my keywords. I'm looking for multiply and addition. Um, and letter A, division, is not what I'm looking for. B, I have addition, but there's no multiply. C is the one I'm looking for. It's got multiply with the parentheses, and it's got addition. So that's the one, but then I'm just double checking for D. There's some subtraction and too much multiplying, so that's definitely not it. So that's another smiley face. Number nine, um, please, um, if you do not know on number nine or ten, don't know how to solve these problems, then make up a number of how much she's going to paint every day. And I always choose something that's easy. So, you know, example would be ten planks per day. And then with that, um, just making up a number, see if it makes sense. If she did ten per day, I would do 650 divided by 10, that would be 65 days. So that makes sense, that's a couple of months. I do 10 per day for 65 days, I'll do all 650 planks. Um, letter B, if I did 10 over 650, that's 1 over 65, 1 65th of a day, no way. Um, 650 times 10, yikes, 6,500 days, Woo, that's too much, I think I'm just going to pay somebody to do that. Um, 650 minus 10 is 640. That's about two years and that's just too long. So it's not those. So please use your common sense. And, and if you just don't know how to solve it, make up a number that you could plug in and just use your common sense. All right, number 10. It takes 78 days for one motorcycle. So how many for two or how many for three or how many for 10 or how many for six like this question is asking. I'm just going to multiply, so your answer is C. Number 11, um, y equals 1. They want to know if that's a solution to this equation right here. If I plugged, it, plugged in 1 for y, 1 minus 9 equals a negative 8, not 10. Um, so that's a no. All right, number 12. Thomas has a science fair, and he's going to display some leaves. He has 25, but that's not enough. That's 19 fewer than he needs. So how many, how many does he need? So um, don't get confused with 25 fewer than 19. Don't do 25 minus 19. It's 25 is, nine, is 19 fewer than he, what he needs. So uh, whatever he needs, subtracting 19 is the 25 he currently has. That's my equation. I'm going to add 19 to both sides. But I'm really just adding 19 to, to the 25 to see how much he needs total. Number 13. Uh, matching an equation with a real life scenario. Here's my equation 469 equals 35x plus 294. Um, just use your common sense. 469 is the total that rules out A and B. 35 times x, um, that's represented right here in letter C, $35 an hour. So this is 469 to total dollars for the bill, and that is equal to 35 times how many hours? and then plus the $294 just for the parts. So C is the only one that makes sense. So look at every answer choice and pick the one that makes the most sense that goes with this equation. All right, continuing with equations, I'm going to solve these equations. I want to isolate my variable. So I've got to get rid of this minus 9 by undoing it with the opposite operation. Add 9 to both sides. So 15 plus 9 is 24. And then here's the thing. Check your answer. Go back. 24 minus 9 equals 15. So check your answer, and then you can put, give that a smiley face and know you're, you're right. Um, P plus 7 equals 27. Subtract 7 from both sides and get 20. Plug it back in. 20 plus 7 equals 27. It's the only one that makes sense. None of these other, others make sense. So don't get these wrong just because you're not checking your answer, taking a minute or two to do that. All right, on to number 16. Um, Jesse scored 74 points in round two. This is seven points less than round one. So round one's got more. So make sure you use your common sense and choose the one that's got seven points more. Here's the equation of m divided by 4 equals 32. Don't get this confused and don't choose 8 because 8 divided by 4 equals 2, not 32. So at what number divided by 4 gives you 32? You have to multiply by 4 on both sides. Check your answer. Number 18, 9 times s equals 36. Um, divide both sides by 9, s equals 4. What times 9 is equal to 36? 
Number 19, riding your bike's good exercise. If your goal is to ride your bike for 140 laps over the next 20 days, how many per day? So I just need to do seven laps per day to do 140 total. All right, number 20, graph the integer four and its opposite. Um, so that's represented in A, four and its opposite of negative four. Number 21, graphing a negative five and three, and then I know that a negative five is less than three. Number 22, um, number 22, I had to put these in order from least to greatest. Make sure you do that. Um, the numbers are written the same on B and C, and hopefully you just noticed that in B, the zero is not graphed. So um, you have to look at those details. Um, most of you caught that today. I was very proud. All right, number 23, use the number line to find the sum, 3 plus a negative 2. If you'll notice on this number line, we start at 0, and the first step we do is go to the positive 3, and from there, we're going to add a negative 2. So we go in the negative direction. We're going to find the difference of those two. They're going to go in opposite directions, so we find the difference of them. We can't add them. So the difference is 1, and then we're still not past 0, so it's a positive 1. So that's your answer for that one. All right, let's move on to 24. All right, number 24. Find the sum, negative 37 plus a negative 25. Now, here um, I have a negative 37 and then a negative 25, so I'm going in the same direction. They're both going to the left, so I'm going to add those together, and that's 62, and I'm certainly still in negative territory if I just keep going to the left, keep going negative. So please make sure you... Um, don't get those two confused. If they're going in opposite, if I have a positive and a negative, they're going in opposite directions, I find the difference. But if they're going the same direction, either this way or this way, I add them and give it the sign of whichever territory I'm in. So use that number line to your advantage. All right, number 25. Um, use the number line to find the difference, 6 minus 9. So first step is going to the 6, then I'm going to subtract 9. Where I end up is my answer, negative 3. So make sure you know how to interpret these models. Um, we can also do keep change change, like we do here in number 26. Instead of 10 minus the negative 25, that turns into keep change change 10 plus positive 25, which is 35. Number 27, this is a model of multiplying integers. So 2 times a negative 9 is basically doing a negative 9 2 times because remember that multiplying is repeated addition. So I'm going to do a negative 9 and then another negative 9. I end up at a negative 18. Number 28, the product. 6 times a negative 9. Here's your rules for multiply and divide. Same signs positive, different signs negative. So I know this is negative, and 6 times 9 is 54. Number 29, I have h minus a negative 22 equals 11. I want to get the h by itself, so I need to undo minus negative 22, so I do the opposite. Add negative 22 to both sides, and I end up with a negative 11. All right, number 30, something divided by 2 gives me a negative 9. So keep your signs in mind. Um, I figured out that 18 is 18 divided by 2 is 9, so I just need to figure out if it's A or C. What's going to give me a negative 9? Negative right here. So I know that it has to be a negative 18 because a negative divided by a positive will give me that negative. So be real careful with that. All right, two equivalent fractions to 2 fourths, which is the same as 1 half. Just look at all the answer choices, and you'll find um, only one answer choice that both of these will be equivalent to 1 half. All right, number 32, the fraction 21, 24 in simplest form, and divide by 3 and get 7 eighths. So whew, make sure you know how to do that. All right, number 33, write the fraction 22 twelfths as a decimal. 1 in 10 twelfths, I changed it to a, um, a mixed number, and I reduced 1 in 5 6, do top in and bottom out, and I know that um, that converts to 1 whole, Point eight three repeating. So even doing this, changing this improper to a mixed number, I knew that B is the only one it could be. That's less than one. That's too much. That's more than two. So I knew it was one something. All right, writing this fraction as a decimal, it's top in, bottom out, and I just had to get started. Didn't even need to finish, um, but I could. Fifteen to four hundred is eight, so that's point eighteen. 
All right, um, comparing these fractions, I need a common denominator to compare. I got 30, and then 9 is less than 10. Make sure if you change the denominators, you change the numerators. All right, a um, couple more. Uh, comparing these decimals, um, 0.22, you just line up your decimals and do a place value at a time. So 2 is less than the 7. So less than is what I'm going to choose. All right, estimating. Rounding to the nearest integer, 53.8, that 8, 5 or more, raise the score, 4 or less, let it rest. So these both round up, 54 and 14, which gives me 68. And number 38, use compatible numbers to estimate. I just use negative 25 times 20. I could do that in my head. I know it's going to be negative, so I know it's not this one. And 25 times 20 is 500. All right, so I'm going to stop there. Um, you continue with the rest of the review, and we'll go over that on Monday, and um, just keep preparing. Um, and remember, problem solving is key. Everything we've done uh, with our warm-ups, as far as filling out those blocks, um, being careful, and checking our answers, um, and you should do fine. All right, see you Monday.